Hello Chargers, here we are once again for our episode of the day. Memorial Games of 2021, the 50th the UAE National Day Rapid Chess Championship. And this game is between me and Grandmaster Alexander Zubarev of Ukraine. Uh, Zubarev became a GM in 2002 and he was able to hit a peak rating of 26 one ten years back all right let's go through the game once more let's do this all right it started with d4 another queen spawn he played knight f6 knight f3 g6 this is quite similar to our previous uh, study on uh, Viorelli or the Chesco. This time, instead of the London system, I went for Bishop G5. Okay, this is the Tory attack, right? The Tory attack with the Bishop G5. He played Bishop to G7, Knight B, D2, Castles, C3. Same approach in the London system with the C3. All right, he played d6 this time. Uh, in my game against Yordachesko, he played d5. In this game, Zubar went for the King's Indian structure with d6. I went for e4, control of the middle, c5. This resembles the dragon, okay, the dragon for black. This is a dragon setup. Took so. A Sicilian for black. D takes e5, D takes e5, queen c2. Knight on c6, h3, restricting this bishop on c8. Well, at the same time, also giving some space for the bishop, for example, because I don't want to go for the exchange, of course, on f6. If he plays h6, this has bishop f4, once again, and bishop h2. H6, bishop f4, bishop e6. Okay, I'm more forcing, bishop c4, forcing the exchange. I don't want him to control the light squares. And I want to also control the d5 square later in the game. Takes on c4, knight takes on c4. He went for b5. Now he has this queen side expansion with a7, b5, and c5, knight e3, pawn on d5, knight on d5, queen to d7. This is a very nice move. The main threat of queen d7, okay, the main plan is to go for queen to e6, attacking my pawn on e4 because the knight is all on f6 is also attacking it. If let's say I would castle here, he would go for queen e6 and uh, I have some issues with the e4 pawn. And I, I don't want to be a passive protecting with that pawn. So in that case, when he played queen d7, I was like, okay, better be aggressive, just push that pawn. He played knight e5. If, if he plays knight h5 here, the knight on the rim is dim. This is, this is going to be a mistake because the bishop h2 and the knight will be trapped on g4, right? If, if let's say g5 just castles here and there's so many holes in black's position, I have knight to f5, I can hit the bishop on g7 right here. I also have rook to d1. Okay, so knight e5 centralizing. Now I canceled. All right. It's not for me. If I play rook d1, I didn't like the option of playing rook d1 because he has knight takes e3 and he's hitting my queen on c2 with a check. And if bishop takes e3, he plays queen e6, he's hitting e5, he's hitting a2. That's a double attack. I'll be losing pawns. I haven't canceled yet. So I was like, okay, let's go for castling. There's a pin on the queen, attacking the knight on d5. At the same time, it captures on e3. The king is protecting my queen on c2, and then I can control the seventh rank after the exchange. 
He went for knight takes e3. Now let's check. Let's check this move e6. If he plays e6, by the way, I would go for h4 to stop g5. And if let's say rook a d8, for example, I would go for h5. Okay. Then since it's going to be a rap, this is a rapid game. Yeah, I would just go for bishop takes g5. Yep. Yeah takes and I take g5 with uh, this unclear position yeah so knight takes e3 rook takes d7 i have this control of the important seventh rank play knight takes e2 king takes e2 rook fd8 is challenging the open file the rook has two all right look at these two things that the rook controls here the file and the rank yes on the seventh and then open file as well rook b7 maintaining the pressure on the seventh for example opponent challenges me again on b8 i have takes rook takes b8 if he takes with a rook for example then i have e6 yep. and that will break his structure here this, be this point becomes isolated after the take on f7 and if he takes with a knight, I can go for bishop e3, attacking the pawn on c5. There's also an x-ray on the a7 pawn. And if he protects it with rook to d5, I would go for rook d1. And white has a better endgame after the exchange. Okay, so after rook b7, he went for g5. Now... I have bishop e3. This is a double attack with bishop on c5, rook on b5. Right. I'll get an extra pawn at least. He played b4. Took on c5, took on c3, took on c3. Now I'm an extra pawn. I have an extra pawn. I'm extra pawn up. And I'm also attacking e7 with my bishop and the rook over there. Rook d5, another pawn. Okay, A pawn is always a pawn. And especially when you are in the end game, and when you're towards the end of the game, this extra pawn matters. Yep. Knight takes e5. I was going for knight takes e5 here to simplify, but I was like, I, 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 I like my knight. Yes. I like my knight on d4. I, I, maybe this knight can bring chaos later in the black's position because i was looking at the f5 square with some ideas of g4 and then knight f5 since the pawn is on g5 yep so i kept my knight although i could have played knight takes e5 if he plays rook takes e5 then i would go rook d1 yes extra pawn yeah knight d4 he played knight g6 Rook to d1, because the bishop was hitting the knight and the rook, so protecting. Keep the pawn as much as possible, especially in the end game. Now, there's a pin on my king. He's ready to take my piece on d4 now. So awareness is also very important, so I have to move out of the pin. Move out of the pin on c2. Play knight f4. Takes on a7. I now have this outside pass pawn once more. My favorite outside pass pawn. He went for knight takes g2. Bishop b4. I went back to b4. It's important before you, you attack your opponent, you also make sure that your king is safe. That bishop on b4 protects c3. Yes, because my opponent is hitting that c3 square. He can maneuver the knight to f4, maybe takes on d4, and then knight e2. Okay, so this uh, this bishop on b4 is also blocking checks on the b-file. So more importance, of course, the king's safety before anything else. Yep. King's safety. So knight f4, this rook is annoying on d5. I went for rook a5. Okay, again, with, with this outside pass pawn here, with the series we, we call it the process of elimination with a series of exchanges i will get a chance to promote that prawn later in the game he didn't want an exchange he went for rook to d7 
I went for H4. Anyway, it was being attacked by the knight. So I was like, okay, you can take that pawn, but I, I want to break the symmetry, okay? I want to break the chain. You take it, okay, but you have a double pawn. Right. Disconnect, disconnect, right? Disconnecting the pawns, disconnecting. So rook g1, a pin. He went for king h7. All right, we have knight f5 here, attacking the bishop on g7 with the rook and the knight, also hitting the pawn on h4. Bishop f6, protecting h4. He also has his outside pass on, which is closer. It's three steps away. Mine is still on a2, it's very far, yeah. It's just a dream pawn. Knight is uh, rook g4 first, attacking the knight. He went for knight g6. Both pieces, both minor pieces, protecting the pawn in h4. Knight e6, re uh, regrouping, right? Repositioning the knight. I, I want to open up the line for the rook. This is our target, the king. My king is safe with this bishop over here. He went for rook b8, pin, now knight e4. I played bishop e7, or right rook h5. The main point of rook h5 is that if, let's say, he continues with bishop to b4, I have knight f6 check, of course. You are not to, supposed to take that bishop because there is a double attack on the king at the rook of d7. So for bishop d8, keeping an eye on that f6 square, keeping an eye on h4, all right. So f4, uh, bringing more troops, yes. The pawn on f2 wasn't doing anything. So I was like, okay, ask for help. Emergency. We, we call also this one a reinforcement. Okay, reinforce. Reinforcing more troops into the game, yes. I need one more. Uh, it's not enough to have two rooks and knight here because the g5 square is protected. So he played rook to d1. He played rook to d1, now f5. Okay, now the pawn. Thank you, pawn. Knight e5, rook g2. He played knight c6. Ah, this is the biggest mistake of the game. But it happens in rapid. He also had seconds, probably less than 20 seconds on his time. And it uh, wasn't easy because if you look at the position carefully once again, he's king side. He only has the knight on e5. I have two major pieces. I have the knight and a pawn. And the pawn is about to go to f6. I'm threatening rook g7 and rook h6 mate. Yeah. So the pressure is so much to bear. Now after knight c6, f6. Again, the threat, rook to g7. This is the hook. Captain hook. The pawn will protect that rook on g7, and then rook takes h6 is going to be made. After knight takes b4, of course, the mate comes. Rook g7, king h8, and rook takes h6, mate. Yep. This was round number eight of the National Rapid Chess Championship. And with this win, with this win, I... I got seven and a half out of eight, which put me in first place. Uh, next to me was seven points going into the last round. What happened in the last round? <laughs> Coming up. <laughs> okay. I hope uh, you like this presentation for today. And um, don't forget again to follow us on Facebook, Charge Max Chess, and also on YouTube. This is Coach Oliver signing off. Bye.